Hi, I'm Kerry Lord from Toft. This video forms part of a series to accompany the Edwards Crochet kits, patterns and books. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about reading a Toft pattern. Um, so this is a postcard pattern, the kind of pattern that you'd get if you were buying one of our complete kits um, or if you choose to have um, a postcard option. A lot of the time it will be coming in a PDF um, which you can choose to print yourself or you can work from a screen. Um, but this is if you get a top postcard pattern that it will look like this format. Um, it, the pattern's written in exactly the same way so this is useful whether you're working from PDF or whether you're working from print. Um, so at the top of the pattern it will always tell you the name and the design of the animal that you're making. So this is Ember the Bunny's pattern that we're looking at here. Over to the left, we've got the you will need. So if you've got one of these patterns um, or you've been lucky enough to be given one, say by somebody else, you know what you'd need to get to complete that project. So you've got the yarn quantity for making the um, animal in a double knit, an Aran and a chunky. Now this is quite exciting and you can watch another video about this that will explain this more, is the fact that you can take the same pattern and it's quite universal, you swap your yarn thickness and your hook size and you can make the animals bigger or smaller um, using exactly the same pattern. So if you're interested in that I would recommend um, watching the video about different sizes of animals with the Toff patterns. Then over on this side you've got your abbreviations, so these will be specific to the abbreviations within this pattern and um, they're not universal, so if your pattern doesn't use a treble for example, it won't have a treble abbreviation, it will just give you the ones that are needed for your pattern. The great news is with the majority of the Ed's um, patterns you're not having to learn many stitches, so you're not having to handle many abbreviations at all. The most important one is the DC. The double crochet stitch so DC double crochet and then the DC two tog double crochet two together which is the decrease. Um, once you've kind of got used to looking at DC and understanding what that stitch is um, it's a very easy pattern to understand because generally certainly on all the level ones level twos um, you will never be using half trebles or trebles so different stitches. So what you've then got is the uh, animal broken into parts. So you've got a body pattern, you've got a head pattern, you've got legs patterns, and then any kind of extra specific to that animal. So ears patterns and tail patterns, etc. Horns in some cases as well. And every standard um, part will begin with the same process, which is begin by DC6 into a ring. Now you can watch a video on this, there's another video that gives you this introduction and my method for doing so. If you are somebody that crochets a lot and you know the magic um, ring or magic loop technique, do go ahead and use that. I happen to recommend a different one that I've just found a little bit easier when learning to crochet. So you can watch a video on begin by DC6 into a ring. Um, that's how most, but like the majority of parts start with all of these animals. Then the pattern's broken down into rounds. Now this is because when you're crocheting, you're going around in a non-stop spiral with these patterns. You're not going backwards and forwards, um, you're not turning and you're not chaining. What you're doing is you're starting with six neat stitches in a closed ring and then you're constantly crocheting in the same direction. Um, so if you are right-handed, you will be crocheting constantly anti-clockwise and if you're left-handed, you will be crocheting clockwise. Um, but other than that, there's no change between the two. You're constantly working in rounds. Um, what I would recommend because of that is the fact that you would use a stitch marker. Again, you can watch a separate video for that. It's a contrast piece of yarn that you'd put through that last stitch so you know where you are. And what that means is when you've completed that round of instruction with a pattern, you can tick it off once you know that you've got your 12 stitches and you can continue down your pattern, ticking as you go, knowing that you're never going to have to go backwards. So when you're reading the patterns, round one, and you see here we've written round in full on this first line, it'll go to RND, the abbreviated version from that point onwards, that's a round. You're going to be working with what can look quite intimidating, it looks like a maths um, equation. It very much is, crochet is about maths, it's about keeping track of where you are um, and being able to count. I'm not expecting you to do any maths at all, you just need to keep track of how many numbers you have at the end of every round of instruction. So this first round will say DC2 into next stitch and that whole instruction is in brackets and then you're told to repeat it six times 
to get to 12 stitches. So what that means is you're going to have six stitches in a ring um, from this first point. So you're gonna have your lovely neat little six stitches in a ring and you're going to work two stitches into each one of those six stitches to get yourself up to 12 by the end of that first round. Now this number in brackets at the end will always be the number of stitches that you need. So when you finish this round, you'll have 12, then you should have 18, 24, 30, 36, 42. That's your standard um, increase, which is adding six stitches in each round. So just to uh, move on with understanding and reading the patterns, that first round you're doing two into each of the six to get to 12. The next round of instruction, you're going to do one stitch into the next one and then two stitches into the following one. Repeat that whole process six times to get yourself to 18. Then there's round three. And this is the round that confuses a lot of people. Um, I think what it is, it's getting used to paying attention to your commas and your brackets when you're reading um, this form of pattern. So at the moment I've got my 18 stitches and I'm going to move up to 24 just to show you this round, this trip up round. So I've got 18 and I'm going to be doing double crochet two, comma, double crochet two into the next stitch. So I'm going to do double crochet two means do one stitch into that one and one stitch into the next one. And then I'm going to do two into the third one. So if you read it and you really break it down and read it out to yourself, double crochet two and then double crochet two into the next stitch. So now I'm gonna double crochet two again. So one, two, and then do two into the next stitch. So that's how you'll go around that ring, effectively increasing in the third stitch. So putting two stitches into that third stitch. Just to explain um, the bit that tends to confuse people is when it says double crochet two, you have a tendency to want to put two into one stitch. Think about the fact that sometimes the pattern might say double crochet 10 and you wouldn't try and put 10 of them into one stitch. You would do one stitch into the next 10 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the final thing really that you need to understand when reading your pattern is this decrease, this DC2 tog um, that you see up here. You can watch a separate video for it, so go and find that decrease um, video if you want a close-up in slow motion, but it'll work in the pattern in exactly the same way, that when it says DC2 tog, you will go straight into doing your decrease. So the final thing really to mention when you're understanding this pattern is the fact that the full stop at the end of a segment will indicate that that's done. The instructions um, will, rather than each time write in full, um, something that would be the same for each part, you will be, unless it's otherwise stated, you will be um, breaking your yarn at that point when you reach a full stop. You'll be putting your stuffing in and then you'll be gathering your stitches together to close off a segment. If you want to have a closer look at all of that, there are videos um, for each of those processes. So the stuffing, the gathering of stitches and the sewing up, you can watch in a separate video um, for each part. But other than that, reading the, the instructions are quite straightforward. When you're new to it, it's about being disciplined. I think it's about crossing it off, ticking it and gradually moving down your pattern. And if sometimes you get to the end of a round and it's not adding up, Step back a little bit, read it out aloud so that you're really breaking down how your instructions work. Um, if in doubt and you're still not getting the right number, know that using a stitch marker means you can always go back and start again. Um, and it might just take you a few times when you are learning um, to, to go back to your stitch marker and then rework that round to make sure you're reading the pattern um, correctly and making sure it's just the bracketed parts that you are repeating number of times stated.